Following the attempted assassination of former President Donald Trump, the Vatican condemned the violence, emphasizing its detrimental impact on people and democracy. United States bishops, including Archbishop Timothy Broglio, also denounced the act calling for an end to political violence and highlighting its incompatibility with resolving political disagreements. Historically, Catholic views on the morality of killing have evolved. Early church Christians, before it was made the Roman state religion, were pacifists. But over time, theologians like St. Augustine and St. Thomas Aquinas allowed for self-defense and protection of the common good in warfare. Despite this shift, the church has consistently emphasized forgiveness with figures like St. Maria Goretti and Pope John Paul II exemplifying this principle by forgiving their attackers. The Vatican's condemnation of the Trump assassination attempt aligns with the church's teachings on the sanctity of life and the importance of forgiveness. This stance underscores the belief that violence is never a solution to political disagreements and highlights the enduring value of human life. In today's politically charged climate, the church's call for unity and peace is crucial. This perspective was evident at the 10th National Eucharistic Congress in Indianapolis, which gathered Catholics from all 50 states and 17 countries. The event highlighted a deep yearning for unity and spiritual renewal within the church. Despite criticism over its costs and focus, the Congress showcased the strength and commitment to traditional Catholic values, emphasizing the importance of the Eucharist in Catholic life. Now, these events Events and responses underscore the Catholic Church's dedication to peace, forgiveness, and unity. They highlight the Church's role in guiding its followers through moral complexities while steadfastly upholding the sanctity of human life and the necessity of forgiveness. With that said, we turn to the war in Gaza. As Christians, when we witness the situation in Gaza currently and the happenings in Israel last October, along with the protests against Prime Minister Netanyahu just this week as he came to speak to Congress, our hearts are deeply moved with with compassion for peace and healing. We may find ourselves praying for an end to the violence and suffering, seeking God's guidance and intervention. It's important for us to show care and concern for everyone affected by the conflict, no matter who they are. The teachings of Jesus remind us to love our neighbors and our enemies and offer support and aid to those in need, regardless of their background, as a Samaritan exemplified in the New Testament. In thinking about the protests against Netanyahu, there is strong feeling about the need for justice and a fair resolution to the conflict. Whatever is fair does seem to be the question. It's crucial for us to address the root causes and grievances that have led to this unrest, if we are able or in the position to do so. We believe in the power of dialogue and reconciliation, hoping that through understanding and cooperation, lasting peace can be achieved. Standing with the marginalized and oppressed is a core fact a core part of our faith, and we feel compelled to advocate for their rights and protection, knowing, of course, that true peace may only come about through the involvement of the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. Now, in general, as Christians, we deeply oppose violence and aggression, following the example of Jesus who seemed to have taught nonviolence. We believe in finding peaceful solutions to disputes and do support nonviolent demonstrations as a means of seeking change. In these challenging times, we try to support peacemaking efforts, whether through participating in discussions, supporting grassroots movements, or voting with our finances through nonprofit donations, or as 200 church leaders recently did, sign an open letter to the current president of the United States, Joseph Biden, calling for a ceasefire in the conflict. For us, being Christians means striving to reflect God's love and justice in all aspects of life, especially in situations as complex and painful as the current one in the Middle East. However, we also recognize that there are diverse perspectives within the Christian community on how to respond to the conflict in Gaza. Just as with Augustine and Aquinas, some of us might argue that while nonviolence and compassion are vital, there's also a need for strong defense and security measures to protect the innocent and ensure stability. We may feel that it's important to support Israel's right to defend itself against threats and maintain order in the face of ongoing conflict and terrorism. As even in Jesus' teachings of turning the other cheek, it's a personal choice, not one force on others or at the cost of one's own citizens or family. This is seen in another group of Christians who didn't sign any letter. They met with Israel's prime minister to offer guidance and support. A group of evangelical Christians. A government's actions, including those of Netanyahu, are sometimes necessary to protect the nation and its people from existential threats. We might feel that while humanitarian concerns are important, they must be balanced with the need for security and the protection of civilians from acts of violence. And who are we to say otherwise? 
otherwise when we are not in a position to counsel or advise. In this view, supporting a government's security measures does not necessarily contradict the values of peace and justice, but rather seeks to uphold them in a complex and dangerous situation. Protests or demonstrations, especially when they escalate into violence, can often hinder rather than help the pursuit of peace and justice as they preach hypocrisy rather than whatever the original message happened to be. We may advocate for a constructive dialogue and diplomatic solutions over public discourse, which may be seen as potentially divisive or counterproductive, but advocacy always for what is right can never be wrong, right? Ultimately, while the core values of compassion, justice, and peace remain central, there are different interpretations and approaches within the Christian community, let alone the world, on how best to apply these principles in complex geopolitical situations, like the one in Gaza, or the assassination attempt on Donald Trump, or on who to support in a presidential election, or any number of sticky situations this world puts before us. Or maybe it's not complex and it's rather pretty straightforward and simple. Now, if you've made it this far in the video and have your own ideas about all of this, go ahead and comment and share. We value discourse, even those that are in complete opposition to our thoughts or beliefs. And go ahead and subscribe as well so that we can continue this conversation.